Hello, beautiful soul. Here is a clip from a recent group retreat that I did in the south of Portugal. Enjoy. Vows are really powerful and they are sustaining. So you can think of a vow like a contract. And they're very long lasting until they're broken because they're usually made with so much energy behind them. So think of it, you know, like a vow that's really common that I'm still working with with a lot of people is imagine, you know, the scenario of we were talking about light workers and healers that came in many lifetimes and many, many lifetimes. And a lot of the lifetimes were really of a lot of suffering and pain and sacrifice and all that. So imagine, for example, um, an empath or a sensitive, because the majority of light workers are. So imagine an empath as sensitive incarnating at a time where they were misunderstood, where they were, you know, ostracized, or worse, where they were killed. Okay, so imagine a highly sensitive person or an empath being burned alive. Okay, and just think of where maybe the thought process of that person in their human self could be at the moment that they're dying a really painful death. A lot of vows can be formed at end of life this way. So, so imagine, you know, like I'm slowly burning alive and the thought can pop up, you know, I'm never doing this again. I'm never doing this again, or, or the association of coming into my power has severe consequences. I am not doing this again. And then there's that vow implanted in that third chakra of fear of coming into power. And there's, but it's not just fear of coming into power, because, right, like I had really bad consequences in the past life, and so then that starts to come up, and I will not come into my power in this lifetime. But it's not just the continuation of the energy, it's the continuation of the energy in a locked vow that's there that, that represents a form of a contract. So just like karmic contracts or soul contracts or whatever, you have to break the contract, you have to execute the contract. This contra contract has been executed. I no longer carry it forward. Because you remember, your free will is really important. So the moment that if you have a contract with someone, so the, the, the contracts are two-sided, right? We talked about this yesterday and with karmic contracts or with sacred partnership contracts, with any contract, they're two-sided. But the cool part is the dissolution of the contract doesn't have to be two-sided. I can dissolve the contract. Okay? So with vows, that's really important. Specifically, yes, vows that we've done in past lives, those are sometimes a little bit harder for us to come into, a little bit harder for us to discover because we don't remember we did that. And so it could be a little bit harder to dig into. So a lot of times when I'm working with people who are afraid to come into their power, they're afraid to express themselves, afraid to express themselves, afraid to put their creativity out there, afraid, 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 afraid. So it could be that there's a locked vow in that, in that third chakra. So it's not just a fear of coming into my power, but it's, it's because at some point in this lifetime or a lifetime before, I said, I will never do that again. Oh, those words are really powerful. They could be powerful positively or they could be powerful negatively. When you put that throat chakra behind it, and remember, I don't need to say the vow out loud. I'm still using my throat chakra if I'm saying it to myself. Everybody know that? I'm still using my throat chakra even if I'm talking to myself. Okay? Now, do we, we talked a little bit about the throat chakra. The thro throat chakra is obviously the chakra of communication, but not just. The throat chakra is the chakra of creativity also. And then some of you are like, wait a minute, I thought it was the womb. Yes, it is, but remember that chakras work in pairs a lot of times. They work together, they... So, so the throat chakra and the second chakra have a very close relationship. Okay, so you can think of you can think of the second chakra as being the womb that gestates something, and then as soon as it pops up into the throat chakra, you can think of the throat chakra as the birth canal that gives birth to this gestated whatever baby, uh, business project 
things we got stuck in the fridge. And now, wait, do I have any blocks in my throat chakra that are preventing me from giving birth to that? Not just giving birth, but taking it out of my fridge and giving birth out into the world. Okay? So that throat chakra is really important. The throat chakra is also the chakra of truth. Truth. So it's... um. It's a truth that's a little bit different because the, the solar plexus is a, is a chakra also of truth, but it's like my truth, you know, my truth, right, as an individual because that's the third chakra. This is, this is my truth as an individual. And then when I get up to the throat chakra, this is my truth on a soul level. This is my truth on a soul level. So, so we call this higher truth. And then this one, lower truth. It doesn't mean that one's worse than the other, but you get what I'm saying, right? It's higher up. So for the vows, we already know we, have, we can have past life vows. So for example, if I, um, I am, I'm in a relationship in a past life, and uh, let's say it's a karmic relationship. In a past life 100 years ago, I have no idea what the hell karmic connections are. I have no idea what the hell's going on. My level of consciousness is pretty low. And so, all right, I'm having a karmic connection and drama happens and that person leaves me. And I am completely, let's say I was a woman in that lifetime and I was dependent on a man and then he left me and I was left destitute. It happened to a lot of women in past lives because they didn't have the economic potential to hold themselves independently. So if the partner ever left them, they were really screwed not just screwed in terms financially, but they were screwed even societally because a woman that's abandoned is less of a prize for another partner, right? So imagine all these cultural things that we've evolved through, right? And so imagine a woman, and it could be a man, but just let's just use the picture of the woman 100 years ago that's abandoned by a partner, and then, okay, now she's ostracized by society, she has no economic means, and what do you think may be going through her head about love? I'm never doing this again. I am never loving anyone again. Heart chakra. So heart chakra closes, and then what's the key to lock the vow? So what a vow does is it just, it, it, the, you shut down the chakra by saying, oh my God, that really hurt, never doing that again. So in order for that to happen, I have to contract that. I have to close off that, that chakra, but then the vow solidifies that with a little lock, and then I put my key in my pocket, and then I die, and then I come into this lifetime, I have no idea I have a lock or a key, or whatever the hell's going on. I just know that I keep having dramatic relationships after dramatic relationships, and then I keep saying to my friends, I'm so unlucky in love. It's not, there are underlying things that are at play here. But even but vows can be made in this lifetime. So a show of hands of anyone in this room who feels like they may have made a vow already in this lifetime. Okay. Give me some examples of what? What would what was the vow? What? That you would never love again. Oh, that even my whole body contracts at that. Can you feel how painful that is? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, those are actually really powerful stories. Does anyone know the teacher Lisa Nichols? Yeah? So Lisa Nichols tells the story a lot. She's a motivational speaker, and she tells the story a lot about how she was so, so, so broke that she had a, a, a child, her baby. I think he was still in diapers because he was, he was really young. And she said um, that the breaking point for her was she was so, so poor that one day her baby had, had um, you know, pooed in, the, in a diaper and she went to change the diaper and her baby boy and she didn't have diapers. So she had to wrap him in some cloth that she had lying around. And that was when she said her vow, I will never be this broke again. And then her, her life took off. So it, that's a positive vow, but you can give it a little bit of a negative twist. Go ahead, what vow? <laughs> 